It's definitely one of the more bizarre games here at E3. Hell yeah, Camille, I have one question for you. How did you get this green lit? <laughs> oh, I have absolutely no idea. Um, basically, I think uh, we have been bugging Sega for quite some time now. Uh, for the first six years of, of my studio, which is a very tiny studio in Paris, uh, we've, we've come to Sega and said, you will probably not buy our game this year, but here it is, and they said, you're right. <laughs> up, until, yeah. up until two, two years ago, uh, when our new game was Hell Yeah, uh, and we put every, it's a love it or hate it game, you know, it's like really, and uh, and they loved it, and other other studio uh, other publisher loved it also, but those those guys uh, uh, Sega gave us the most uh, freedom of crea creation. Uh, they haven't called us for the first eight months at all. And they said, okay, you guys are completely crazy, but it's it's a cool game, so we're not just gonna interfere, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So that was cool, that was cool. So how long has it been in development for then? It's oh, so it's a, it's a team of eight people, basically, and uh, for the core version. Uh, and we worked on that for 18 months, and now it's done. It's, uh, it's into certification tomorrow, I think. Oh, something fantastic. Like that. Very, very okay. um, give us a bit of uh, background here on what people are seeing on the E3 show floor. Sure. So uh, it's a 2D platformer uh, with a little twist. So we're trying to do a Metroidvania kind of style. Uh, and, and a Go Pokemon. So Go Pokemon because uh, it was a stupid business decision and design decision also, but I love it. Each monster is unique. Um, so that doesn't make sense because you see him like 10 seconds and then he's gone. Yeah. Uh, but it builds the tension on of, uh, because each time you have to kill your next monster in a very precise and weird way. So you're always expecting what's next. What, what, what's going to, what's <laughs> going to happen next? Uh, the, the idea about that is you're Ash, a little rabbit. You're the Prince of Hell. But you're not there yet. I mean, uh, yeah, there's a lack of respect from your monsters, uh, especially since you have a little thing for Rubber Ducky, you know? And uh, you're supposed to be badass. So you, when the paparazzi takes a picture of you having fun with your Rubber Ducky in your bathtub, there's a problem, you know? And, uh, and the picture is on the Heltonet in, in a few seconds. And as you know, I mean, Heltonet is the, the version of internet where you only have porn and ads. Completely different, you know? It, it, it acts very... No, 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 no. And, uh, <laughs> and so when you, have, when you have something on the Heltonet, you can take it off. So, he has a great idea, just kill everyone who saw it. So basically that's the story. And, and so now, you, um, you, as you have seen, I guess, uh, it's, a, it's a platformer when you drill your way uh, through, through the levels and through the monsters. And each monster has to be killed in a very specific way. Uh, you've got yeah, it's, it's like little mini games almost. Yes, I mean we are really fan of WarioWare, you know this, and it's it's a bit like that, you know, when the mini game comes in and you say what what the hell, and you have a few seconds to understand what's going on, and then it's a very simple one, and it's just an excuse to make a huge animation afterwards with very silly stuff going on on screen, and have everyone chuckle. That's the idea. Well, that, that's the thing. I mean, I I, I know sir from playing it. There's a couple of digs at Sonic about you know collecting seven power emeralds and everything. And the humor of it I, actually sort of semi reminds me of Parodius. Remember the SNES Sugar Mop Parodius? Oh, Parodius. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of that course. Sort of style, lovely, yeah. lovely thing. Yeah. Um, well, two things. The first thing is that yeah, uh, th those games were um, um, when we were 10, 12. Yeah. We played those games, you know, Parodius. Uh, 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 before that, we played those. Uh, those games on the Genesis and on the Dreamcast, and they, some of them were really wacky, you know. Yeah. And that was a day where making a silly game was not too bad if you don't take yourself too seriously. And I think it's something we're slowly starting to lose in this industry: is like nothing, take, not taking yourself too seriously, just having fun. And um, my background is uh, lots of nonsense, um, uh, lots of LucasArts games, and I'm so happy. I mean, I was in the car with Ron Gilbert this morning, for fuck's sake. Uh, how how did that? Um, you know what? Go on. How how did that fall about? Um, I mean, um, uh, Double Fine is making the next game yeah. with Sega, and we were in the same hotel. And I'm just like, holy crap! I'm with Ron Gilbert. So I told him. I mean, that's because of you. I'm started. I started my third studio. My, and back in the days, I was playing your games. I said, I'm sorry. You must be really poor now. <laughs> 
So that's awesome, I mean. And, and so the, the general idea is that in France, you are in between Japan and the US. And so you have both the cartoon game and, and, the, and the manga uh, uh, theme, plus a little bit of stupid French spirit. Um, and, um, but most importantly, I think it's more than just countries. It's just people like us in, uh, back in the days uh, who were playing games. I mean, that's the real nation. I mean, there were more differences between someone who was like playing Amiga and ST than, than Germany and France, for instance, you know, for, for gaming. So we are basically talking to, to the little 10 year old who is inside of us uh, uh, and just wants to have fun and, and play out and, and just kill everyone. That's like you, you sort of mentioned the sort of French humor you guys have in this, but there's also the element of a very fantastic, beautiful, animated, hardcore platformer. I mean, yeah, it's like yourselves you. and Ubi with Rayman. Yeah. I mean, there, there seems to be that sort of thing of, why is there not more of this stuff out there? Uh, first of all, I mean, we, we cannot compare with uh, Ubisoft yeah. Montpellier. I mean, those guys are way, way, way higher than us. I mean, they are, uh, Rayman Origin was done by like loads of people for quite some time. Yeah. And this game was made by eight crazy guys for 18 months. <laughs> I mean, we couldn't compare, but we, we have a relationship with them. We respect them really much. Yeah. And we have been, we have the, the chance to work a bit with them. So there's a bit of a, you know, a pride fight. Say, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, come on. I mean, it's beautiful. UB Art Framework say, okay, let's try and do something that doesn't look as good, but let's try. And, and, and uh, my idea is that for the last 12 years, I've been working with independents mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm, I've been graced to, to find really good guys uh, who stand on their feet. And so each guy has just one job. The, all the graphics was done was one person. All the music, 35 tracks, more than three minutes. It's quite good, I think. One guy also. Yeah. And, and, and my goal is just to cook for them in the secret restaurant I'm hiding in Arcado <laughs> and have them have fun, be a little bit drunk yeah. and keep reality outside for 18 months. Basically, it's my job. That your job to make these people just go more crazy than they already are. And, and my job is to keep reality outside. Yeah. You know, it does not kick in. Because those guys are extremely talented in my opinion. I mean, I'm, I have absolutely no talent, so I can talk about it. That's why I'm the boss. Uh, so, and uh, those guys are extremely talented. So the only thing I have to do is to create an environment where everyone is at ease and everyone can, you know, take its pride against each other and say, okay, oh, you did that? Okay, wait for me tomorrow, you will see. And that's just, we're just having fun. And it's been 10 years already. And uh, this is our big thing. We know it's a, it's a medium game, but for us, it's like the highest mountain we ever climbed. Well, you're saying that it's, it's a 15, 14, 15 hour game to play through. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, how, how does that work? I mean, Metroidvania, we, we know the sort of style of it. Is it a case of multiple maps, one huge growing, growing map? No. Um, the idea, yeah, we are talking about 12 to 15 hours for the first loop without any uh, special mission, uh, stuff like that, and hardcore stuff. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of backtracking. I mean, that was something really important for us. And the, the fact you have a driller allows that because even in the first zone, you may have noticed that some of the blocks were in a different material. Some of them were lava and you could not drill them. And for that, you have to upgrade your driller, which happens halfway through the games after you kill one boss uh, and then you can go back there if you want. So there's a lot of backtracking. The first level you did, it's only 50% of the first level. All the rest is backtracking if you want. Okay, okay so and, a lot of stuff. And I mean, that 12 to 15 hour, and this is a digital release as well. Yeah. Yes, it, it must be, an, it, it just shows you how, how you guys feel about this modern age, whereas last generation, we're talking about Mega Drive and stuff like that, this would be a full retail release. You guys are managed to squeeze this yeah. into a download. Uh, we have mixed feelings about digital, to be honest. Uh, I started this second studio because I wanted to have boxes. Uh, my first company was a, a company for a mobile game in 1999, and someone shut the server down, the games are gone. You know, so that's not real. Mm. There's no la sustain, there's no last ability. No. Yeah. I mean, a game, you, you, you can send it back if, it, if it's crap. You can uh, give it as a gift to someone, and you can sell it in a garage sale 20 years from then. Yeah. If you don't sell your game in 20 years' time for one buck, it's not a real video game, you know? And we needed our boxes. I, I made some lenticular art for, for uh, one of the game. It took me three extra months just to have an animated GIF on my cover, but I wanted that. At the same time, when we were selling our games at $30, we only got two. And when we were making some very small games on the indie version of, uh, of the Xbox Live, and we were sell selling those games for three bucks, we got two too. So we got the same amount and we could charge the customer 10 times less. Makes perfect so, sense. Yeah. So, so we well, would, we, would, you have a, would you have a thought process about uh, creating like a special edition for this where you almost get exactly. a box set with it? Exactly. I'm starting a new publisher now and, and we will be in charge uh, of that. You know, uh, making, taking everything that's cool about digital, low prices and being able to work together even if we're not in the same room 
but also be able to do special edition because we love that. We have been sending uh, our lenticular covers uh, because they was only in the USA and in France. We have been sending 450 of them uh, for free around the world for everyone who asked for the last three years uh, because I mean that's important for us and 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 we know and we just signed one of the lenticular color cover two two hours ago. So those guys, it's important for them. And then when I was a kid, I could only buy two games a year. It better be not be crap. And when you buy it, it better have loads of stuff, you know, a map cloth, uh, something, loads of stuff. You know, you want something for your money. Yeah. If this does well, yeah. and from what we're seeing, it should. What next? Can we see this guy coming back? Uh, Can you see a sequel? Can you see DLC? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Uh, for the moment, we're resting a bit. Uh, we have uh, having uh, 30 days off. The game is done, so we're just resting a bit. Uh, and then afterward, we will make a little bit in between the Arcade series and Hell Yeah. I, I would say nine to nine months to a year long game for probably five to seven euros. I, I think we like this sweet spot as customers. It's I mean all the indie games that are out now. Lots of them are really good. And, uh, and I mean, there's something about it. So we would like to go a little bit in between, uh, a li let's say two thirds of Hell Yeah, in terms of size and scope and stuff like that. Because uh, that was quite, a, at that moment, Arcado is a company who everyone works in the same room. There's no tie, there's no meeting, there's no bullshit. It's, it's as much as possible 100% production. And, and when you are more than eight to nine, you need to be bossy, you need to start to have uh, stuff like uh, synchronizes people and that's it's right. a lot of energy lost whereas this is just a lot it feels like a lot of people same passion in the same room yeah. friends just doing stuff yes. that they because they love it exactly yeah. it's a good formula it works well we eat well we have lots of fun so why stop okay I guess wrapping up then when can players get their hands on with this and where can they get their hands on with it uh, we sadly missed the summer of arcade as you have seen that we have been told by not a lot but I don't know no one knows uh, so it will be a little bit after that. I, I, we don't know yet. I'm not teasing you for, or bullshitting you. I just don't know. Um, it should be a little bit after that, but soon after that. The game is almost done. It's, it's in. It's in. Uh, for them, it has been sent uh, or it will be sent uh, for Microsoft and Sony uh, for certification in the next days. So it's almost done. Well, listen. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, enjoy your break. Thank you. Oh, yeah.